but I was just thinking about Netflix and like, you know, they're, they, I wouldn't recommend that they outsource their recommendation algorithm, right? Like that is a core part of their IP that they want to task their data scientists with. But let's say they didn't have a lot of data science talent and they needed to use them just on those high, high priority items. Well, maybe they'd want to outsource something like their churn model. That's pretty straightforward or their their lifetime value model. So there are a lot of these, these models that have been built for you or the accelerators um, that can uh, derive them for you from your data that you can leverage so that you can focus on the most important thing to your business, which is ultimately using the output of those models to make decisions. And this is a big kind of trend I'm seeing in the analytic world in, in general is because because as a service models and other models have democratized a lot of what, what was once the province of just a select few data scientists, now businesses can start to use the democratized outputs of those analytics to make better decisions. Um, and that's critical because in a lot of cases you haven't really had access to these, you know, predictive scores or dynamic segments or whatever it might be. And so instead of you know, building out this new and, and foreign data science capability, companies should focus instead on upskilling themselves in terms of data literacy and learning how to ask questions and transform business questions into data and analytics questions and how to use the output of analytics optimally. And that's honestly what I'm really excited to see in this space is how people start to really impact the customer experience in real time, like we've been talking about in an optimal way that benefits both the customer and the business um, with advanced analytics.